Well, several major hearings involving high-profile figures with ties to former President Trump are taking place next week. All are related to the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol and other efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Hearings for a case involving former Trump White House advisor Peter Navarro are scheduled for Monday and Wednesday. He faces criminal charges for refusing to cooperate with the January 6th Select Committee. Another hearing is set for Monday in connection to Mark Meadows' effort to move his Georgia election interference case to federal court. You'll recall he was the chief of staff to then-President Trump. There's also a hearing Tuesday for actor Jay Johnson, who has been charged in the January 6th riots. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane is keeping tabs on everything. He joins us now. Hey there, Scott. So let's let's start with Mark Meadows. He surrendered in the state of Georgia just yesterday. He didn't want to do so. He's been trying to move his case out of state court. Talk to us about um, why that is being delayed, that decision, if he wants to try and, and pursue it. Um, and what's the legal argument behind it? This really is a traffic jam inside the courthouses, isn't it? You show just some of what next week can bring. Also next week, we could learn the trial date for Donald Trump here in Washington, D.C., and it's sentencing for the high-level Proud Boys defendants. Let's put those aside and focus on what else happens Monday, this Mark Meadows hearing. It's potentially pivotal. Potentially. He's arguing that his case should be moved out of Fulton County, where he was processed, booked, and photoed last week or earlier this week, and wants it moved to U.S. District Court in Atlanta, the federal court system, which offers a couple different um, nuances. In federal court, the jury pool is quite different. It's not just Fulton County jurors, but it would be people from throughout the northern district of Georgia. Small towns, big cities, people from throughout the area. And also, in federal court, you remove the cameras. There'd be no cameras in the courthouse, no televised trial. Things are quite different. The argument he's making is that these crimes for which he's been accused occurred when he was serving as a federal officer, a U.S. president's chief of staff, and that this is a federal jurisdiction thing. The prosecutor has responded, we're talking about crimes that you have alleged to commit when you were serving as a campaign surrogate of Donald Trump. You can't be a federal employee, a federal officer, and campaign. That's against the law. You were a citizen when you were helping the campaign, so the argument might be moot. We'll find out what the judge says after the hearing Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time in Atlanta. Well, Scott, let me ask you about Peter Navarro. Why does he have not one but two hearings scheduled for next week? What exactly is being addressed? because he's about to go on trial for contempt of Congress, federal crime for which he was charged almost two years ago. You'll recall he defied that House January 6th Select Committee and its order for a deposition, said he couldn't do it, that Donald Trump, the former president at the time, the president, had ordered him not to. Or actually, he was at that point an ex-president, but a recent ex-president. Um, it's gone through the process here in the federal court in Washington, where he's challenged it, he's tried to appeal the charges, tried to force the courts to drop the case and prevent the trial. Well, trial is going to proceed in the early September window in the federal court in Washington. Next week, he goes before a judge to try to make preparations for that trial. A couple things we know. Donald Trump is not expected to testify, even though Peter Navarro is basing a lot of his arguments on what he said were Trump's words. And Navarro himself is finally going to face a judge after two years of waiting. Scott, uh, let's talk about the actor who was charged for his involvement in January 6th, Jay Johnston. He appeared in things like Bob's Burgers as Jimmy Pesto's voice. He's lost those, those roles that he had. I understand he's called the whole incident a mess. Where does his case currently stand? He was supposed to face a judge the same day Donald Trump was arraigned in Washington earlier this month. They postponed it to next week. He is a rank-and-file January 6th defendant. No high-level charges, but shows you the range of defendants, a Hollywood actor among them. All right. Scott McFarland, thanks.